hi there. Imagine a world where every child could communicate effortlessly, regardless of their mother tongue. Sounds impossible? Well, stick with me here and I'll show you how theater, yes, you heard right, theater, might just be the universal language we've all been searching for it in language learning. Welcome to Raised in Thailand. It's all about language learning for kids on this channel. And uh, today is basically too hot to walk outside. So I'm here with my daughter, Selena. She's in a theater class right now. She's preparing for a Harry Potter show. And I was going to walk outside and talk a little bit about theater and how important it is for language learning. A lot of the skills that they learn in theater is very applicable to language learning. So we're gonna go through six different uh, aspects of theater today. I am Bill and I taught languages for over a decade. And now I have this channel together with my daughter, Selena, and she is the practical implication. She shows us how it works in practical terms. Uh, so if you look at the videos with my daughter on the thumbnail, then you will see more practical application. The first on the list today is body language and gestures. And that is so important because body language is actually the same or similar for any language. And it even comes before the language itself. It's more fundamental than language. Um, and we are born with a lot of this already. They had a study at the University of California where they saw that infants only four months old, they can understand the meaning of somebody reaching out to them. That is how fundamental it is. And if there is a conflict between the body language and what is actually being said with words, then we will always listen to the body language. I can give you an example of this. So I live here in Thailand and many times if you ask a Thai person something, they will say yes, but it will never happen because they actually mean no. Uh, so if you keep asking them many times, they just say yes, but there will always be an excuse and it will never happen, which is not a bad thing. It's just the way they communicate here. So, but if you pay very close attention to the body language, you can actually see that with their body language, they say no. So that's the clues we have to pick up on. And even though we are born with the ability to read and understand body language, we can always be better at it. So this is something that your kid can be even better at and will thus be better at learning the language they learn. There's a theater school which use this principle in the way that they even before they start learning any lines, they will study body language because it's so fundamental. Number two on the list today is emotional expression. And this is really universal across cultures. Um, many ways to express emotions will be similar in different cultures. And there was a fun little experiment uh, called reading the mind in the eyes. It was kind of like a test developed by the psychologist Simon Baron Cohen. And what they did is they had images of eyes in different contexts where people conveyed the different feelings. But only from looking at the eyes, they were able to see what feeling that person had. That's quite fascinating. And if we take this a step further, it also means that we can convey stories through emotions. And even if you're not from the culture, you might be able to understand. So why is this important for your kid, you might wonder? And the answer is that it opens up for more empathy, which is crucial when it comes to understanding other people. And basically that's what language is, right? It's communication. 
So it's all about understanding each other. So when your kid is more empathetic, he or she will understand other people better and thus communicate better. The next on the list is mime and pantomime. First of all, what's the difference between mime and pantomime? The difference is that mime is just when you do some movements or use some props to pretend that you do something, use your body. But pantomime, then it's more like a show where you have an audience and you interact with them and you tell a specific story. But both these are important in language learning. An English teacher in Japan used mime to teach the word giraffe by stretching her neck and eating leaves. The children understood this and they it was so clear that they all remembered it very easily. So it's all about getting things into a context, using your body, and you will remember things a lot better. And this can also be, it may be a question like, okay, how can pantomime and mime be important for my child in language learning? But it can be useful in taking a language to the next level. Imagine if your kid is at a beginner level and there are many things that they are not able to express yet. But in order not to be frustrated with the lack of being able to communicate properly, then they can use mime or pantomime to fill in the gaps, sort of, so that they are able to go to the next level. And I can illustrate this by a personal story. When I was 18 years old, I was in Italy and I had met a girl and I was trying to visit her a little bit later that evening and there was a fence and there was a guard and I didn't speak more than a couple of words Italian and I was trying to explain him using language first like what I wanted to do and he didn't understand obviously and then when I started to pantomime he finally understood and that kind of saved me from that situation and not to mention that the best way to learn a language, like strike everything you ever heard, the best way to learn a language is to mimic somebody who is native in that language. And that is a bit, yeah, for children, it's a lot easier. Uh, a friend of mine uh, from Norway, he went to Denmark for three months and became fluent in the language in such a short time. And you may, say that oh Norwegian and Danish isn't that very similar no it's very difficult like I understand 100% of spoken Danish but I cannot speak it it's very difficult anyways three months and how did he do it he found a friend at his age and he just mimicked him he did the same things he said the same he talked in the same way he just kind of mimicked and this is really, really efficient uh, when you learn a language. The next on the list is improvisation and adaptability. And you might ask again, why does my kid need to be able to improvise? Well, in language situations, there will always be unexpected things arising. And in those situations, your kid needs to be able to think on their feet. And this is something that they have really understood in theater. So there is a game in theater called the Yes And. It's an improv game. Basically, it goes like this. You have a conversation with preferably two people. And one says, I just got a hat for my grandmother. And the other one says, yes. And I can see that it's very nice. So the point here is that you keep building on, you accept whatever is being said, and then you build on it. So this is good for two things. Not only improv, because you have to think of ways that the conversation, that you want to steer the conversations in, but also it's good for acceptance, actually, which is very important in itself. Think about all the frustration in your life most of it comes from not accepting what already is. So this is not only about language learning, this is about life. 
If you accepted everything that came your way, you would probably not suffer as much. And if you can teach your kid this skill, it will help them even when they are grown up. But if you don't have the resources to send your kid off to theater, you can get started right away today. So how can you do that? There are actually two ways. The easiest way, go to our video on improv theater games, language games, and see them. There are three of them. I'm gonna put the video up in the card here. The other one is that for each of the points we go through today, there are six points altogether, we have one language learning game that uh, is specifically designed for the talking point. So if you write in the comments, just say, please send me the games, I will ship it over to you. The next on the list, number five, is the listening and observation skills. So why do we need that? Because there's a lot of nuances in the language that doesn't get communicated through words its intonation and its body language and this is most people don't think about it but this is so important just think about somebody that has like asperger's syndrome why don't they understand the social context properly it's because they don't hear the intonation and also because they don't pick up on the body language but like we talked about earlier it's not only that sometimes when you say some words the body language can say the opposite is also that the nuances is not only black or white, it's just all the nuances could be in intonation and body language, which is of course important for your child to pick up on in order to be fluent in the language. There is one other reason that your kid needs to be better or as good as possible in this, and that is the intonation in the language. Because all languages have different intonations, and if we're able to pick it up, we're going to be better at that language. So just to, as an example myself, you can tell that I'm not from the United States. But why is that? Did you think about why? Is it because I don't pronounce the words themselves properly? Probably not. Most of it is because of the intonation. So in English, you go down in the tone towards the end of the sentence. But in my you know, native language, we go up, so it's opposite. So you can probably hear a little bit of the tone is a little strange, a little bit different. There's actually a language teaching school or like a philosophy, language learning philosophy, where they don't learn grammar in a language the typical way. They, they basically just have the students watch the language being spoken and they're trying to derive language patterns from that. Okay, so the last uh, point on the list today is teamwork and social interaction. So I think I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but language is a social tool. If there's no social situation, there is no language, right? So that's why it becomes really important to master teamwork and social interaction. It was a little bit interesting to see that a study at a bilingual school in Canada, students who participated in a bilingual theater production showed significantly improved communication skills in both languages compared to their peers who did not participate in this. Okay, so we've gone through a lot today. Um, Again, if you don't have the resources to send your kid off to theater camp, don't worry. Just see our video on the theater improvisational skills and write in the comments and I'll send you the games. There are six different games. Okay, so thank you for watching the video today. I really appreciate every single one of you and have a good time with language learning and your kid. And see you later, bye-bye. Today, we're diving into three improv games that will revolutionize how your child learns language. Maragat, crepe to do. Pelti, 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 pelti. He says, don't do that. That is not good. No, 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 no.